Hi, welcome to my new series, Embedded Programming. And this is the first episode in that series. In this video, I'd like to go through the setup of your Arduino board. So let's assume that you have acquired an Arduino board and I'll show you in a few seconds where you can get Arduino board and so on. And you can get a whole lot more information and we can get the software and everything. But this video, we're gonna focus on you have an Arduino board and you want to be able to use it. So we're gonna install the driver. If you're in Linux, you don't have to worry about driver installation. It should just work out of the box. If you're a Mac or Windows, there's a good chance that oh, if you plug it in, you're probably not going to see that it works. So and I'll show you what I mean when I say you plug it in and, you, and whether it works or not. If you plug it into your computer, the light will come on, it will power up because it's going to use USB to power the device. But I'm talking about getting a COM port if you're on Windows or in Mac, getting a device um, interface so that you can actually talk to the device and send it code and so on. So we'll see how to install the driver. Then we're going to install the IDE. Now when it comes to installing the IDE, now the IDE, which is the integrated development environment, is what we're going to be able to use to write code. And so we have two options. We can install the desktop editor, and that is what we, I'm going to show you at first. And then optionally, you can install the online editor. Now, and to install the online editor, since it's an editor online, you're not really installing the online editor. We install in are the plugins for your browser so that you can access, you know, if you use the online editor in your browser, then your browser can talk to the serial driver. So you still need the serial driver, right? So even if you plan to use the online editor, you still need the serial driver because the serial driver is what your operating system need in order to talk to that device. The plugin that you put in your web browser is just so that your web browser can talk to the serial driver or talk to your operating system if you want to think of it that way. So either way, you have to install the serial driver. And then optionally, if you just want to stick to the online editor, then you can just do the web browser plugin. If you want to do both, then we'll install the desktop editor and the um, browser plugin. And so you have the option of doing that. Now, what does the online editor give you? Well, it just give you ability to be able to share code very easily. Um, see what others have been doing, um, if they've shared it, and basically access your code from anywhere. Let's say you leave your home, you can go somewhere and access your code. But I find that is not such a compelling reason to use online editor, because even if you were to be somewhere else and try to use the online editor while you can access your code, you still need, one, the plugin for the web browser, um, if you were trying to, let's say you want, you, you went on vacation and you took your Arduino with you and you're thinking, well, okay, I just need to take my Arduino with me because I have a on, I can access the online editor and I can do it from any web browser anywhere. Well, I don't need to work with my computer. Uh, uh, it's not going to work because you have your Arduino, you plug it into that computer in the library or in your vacation um, place, wherever, and you still need the driver You still need a serial driver. So without the serial driver in that computer, the operating system cannot talk to Arduino. Now let's assume that's a Linux box, for example, and so it has the driver built in. Well, the browser doesn't have the plugin, so you'd still need to install the plugin. So hopefully you're seeing that how, um, while it's pretty cool to have an online editor, I think the fact that you still always need your device on that computer where you're gonna use the online editor, and you still need the plugins and all that stuff, I don't think is that of a compelling sell. But all that aside, we'll see how to install it. And I, wanna, I don't want to make this video any longer by ranting about that. Let's start off by checking out what's available in terms of off Arduino offering. If you go to the Arduino, A-R-D-U-I-N-O, that CC website, this is what it looks like. Let me zoom in a little bit. And so you can see what is Arduino. If this is your first time or you don't know anything about Arduino, definitely check that out and there's a video and then it talks about the boards and the software which we will install but what you might want to do eventually after you don't check that out is buy an arduino if you don't already have one and so click on this buy an arduino button or you can go up to the top let's go back and click on store and 
it will take you to the same place. And so you can see all these different Arduino boards. They have different capabilities in some of number of GPIOs, um, pulse width modulation, and all this sort of stuff. If this is all very new to you, I suggest you start off with something simple like this Arduino Uno. It's a very nice board. Um, or if you want to go with something that has Wi-Fi capability, um, so you can access this over the network, then you can go with this art one of these Arduino um, Wi-Fi board um, like this guy. Um, there's also a much cheaper Arduino board, um, something like the Arduino. Da -da 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 -da, where is it? There's Arduino Nano. That's um, also fairly cheap, and you have the Arduino Micro, right? Which is just about 20 bucks. So if you're new, choose one of those boards to get started. If you're into embedded development and you like it, I guarantee you, you'll find your way back to the store buying even more boards for different things. For example, there's this motor uh, control board. So if you want to do like a robotics project, which I'll show later, um, or this guy, you might end up buying one of those boards. Um, so don't worry about it, get a board. All right, so now let's assume you have a board. What's next? So I, like I said, we'll start off with the downloads. And so while it's download, I'll explain what is embedded programming because there's this big assumption I've made. I've made the assumption that you know what embedded programming is, but this might be your first time to embedded programming. So let's start downloading the tool. So we go to software and we'll click on downloads. And then if we scroll down, we'll see Arduino um, software, the desktop. Um, application and over in the right here you can see which platform is available for so i'm on a mac so i'll hit this button and you can choose either contribute and download or just download and then while that's downloading i will go and show you some of the boards that i have so what is embedded programming embedded programming is just writing programs for embedded board well, embedded board is like this Arduino boards that we were just looking at. Those are, those are just examples, few examples of some embedded boards. So let me show you a few of my embedded boards. There is a BeagleBone and is a TI Launchpad. I have Arduino over there, a ESP8266, and I'll get back to why I have it set up in this rather weird way. And that's going to be in a future video where I'll use some Go programming to control that motor. And we're going to spin it and stuff like that. So that's something a work in progress. And the intent is to try and get a remote control robot. But we'll get back to that. There's a Raspberry Pi. And that's the Raspberry 8 as one of the very first one. And there is a Raspberry Zero with a Raspberry camera. And right now that's running Node Red. And it can take picture. I can send it up to Google Vision API and get some label for that picture. And I'll show you that all in a future video. So embedded programming is really just writing code for these little microcontrollers with peripherals. And a microcontroller is really, really just a very, very scaled down um, processor that does some specific things and have some integrated peripherals or maybe some peripherals outside of it that you can access. So now I've shown you a few of my embedded boards. If you look at my screen, what is supposed to happen is this. I'm supposed to be able to, when I plug in my USB device, it's supposed to have a new device show up here. And as you can see, there are two devices there, but let's watch the, uh, that list of devices. And I'm on a Mac, but if you're on Linux, you can do something like this. For Windows, you can just go to devices and then look at the ports. And then you can see when you plug in the device, your USB device, which ports it shows up on. And so mine is obviously not showing up here, and I'm going through a hub. But I know this works on another laptop, but I'll try it by plugging it directly into my computer. And same thing, nothing, all right? Um, so um, it's not the hub that's the problem. So I just switch it from the hub to my, plug it into my computer and then back to the hub because I know it works on another computer going through this hub. And 
So this problem is something that you'll find a number of people complain about. Um, if you go online and you search for, you know, Arduino not showing up on Mac or something like that, you'll find a lot of people complaining about this. And the number of forums, as you can see, I visited some of them, and they're telling you all sort of different things to do, um, whether it's to install some driver from someplace. And I would say this is the thing you probably want to do, is this FTDI chip that come that driver is probably the only thing I would say you should install. So I would say if you're having this problem where you plug in your Arduino and you cannot find a device for it, then you try first rebooting with the device plugged in, still see if that see if that resolve your problem. If it doesn't, then like in my case it does, it didn't. Then come to installing this chip. Now, how do I know how this is FD FTDI chip I'm using? Well, if I instead run this other command and this IO command, and this is on Mac. So you shouldn't have this issue in Linux and Windows is you, you might have to install a driver too. Um, but you can see all this information about all the USB devices that are plugged into my computer camera and um, you know my microphone and so on. But I could sort of put this through said. If you don't know said, don't worry about it. Um, but basically I could filter out the information I want. And so now you can see I'm just looking for like the name of the devices. And I can wrap this in a watch command. And if I do that, now it will keep watching um, this list of the USB devices. And you can see when I pull this out, if you look at my screen, you'll see in a minute, um, I have one less item in my list and I plug it in. So the my computer or OS is detecting this FTD32 UART. And so we can highlight this and we can go search online and you can see how you know you can go to spark funk or any other place but notice it takes you back to this same ftd ic chip driver website okay so that's another way you can get you find your way here and once you're here now you can um and that's pretty small but i would rather just come down here and so i'm on mac um, three to eight node nine and above so here and I'll come and okay this driver is signed by Apple so that's good I'll click on this and it's downloading I'll click there and let's see um, the last time I actually used my Arduino is about two years ago I've been using some other devices my Raspberry Pi and the ESP 8266 which we'll get to I keep mentioning it, but anyway so let's see if this works so I'll follow the installation the reason why I'm showing you this is because I don't like those videos that says, okay, I'll show you how to set up Arduino or Raspberry Pi or whatever it is, or I'll show you how to do X, Y, and Z, and then they skip all these steps. My video might be a lot longer, but hopefully you actually see step by step and you can forward through the parts that are boring and too long. Um, so no, I'm not interested in this because I see my computer is registering, it's showing that um, it detects the device. What I really want to see is this. So let's see if um, I, there's a good chance that after I install this driver, I might have to reboot. I'll fast forward through this bit because you don't really need to see this long, boring install. And I'll show you again when the installation is completed. So now we are at the end and uh, installation is successful. And so I can move this to the trash because I don't need it anymore. And it doesn't tell me I should reboot, but so far I don't see anything new there so let's plug this out plug it in to see if that triggers loading um creating a device um uh, i will just re restart so i'll go reboot my computer and come back and see if it works so i'm back i restarted my computer and so here i'm at a command line so let's see if it's there now so i'll rerun that watch command and there it is. Notice how before I have this new thing and I can plug this out and plug this in and so we can see. So now I have a device. Great. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have a device because if you don't have a device, it doesn't matter if you go install the software because then you, there's nothing for you to, to connect to. All right. Once we have a device, now we, could, we have some options. You can go to the Arduino website and go to software and you could use their online tool or you can download. 
Now, if you use the online tool, what that allows you to do is to be able to write code in an editor online, save it in the cloud, all this fancy stuff, share it with other people, import examples, and all these other things. And by the way, the software that we're gonna install, if you install it on your computer, has a ton of examples also. So I I have an online account. You have to create an online account, of course, to use the online tool. It's up to you. We might take a look at that, but for now, I'll go with the downloads. And if you click on download and get um, the R, download the Arduino IDE, and you can see here, click on the appropriate one. I've already clicked and downloaded mine, and so, it's a zip file that comes down as Arduino blah, blah, blah version, macOS.zip. Now, once you have that, you can unzip it. So I will close this for now, and I'll simply go to my download directory, and there is the Arduino for Mac. Now, um, if you're on a Mac, um, there used to be an issue with the earlier version of zip on Mac and unzip, where it couldn't unzip really large files correctly. Um, so I use 7-zip and then I do extract, say Arduino. If, I don't know if they fixed that issue, um, but that's just what I do. Um, however, unzip the archive that you get for your platform and simply put it in place. Um, for Windows users, let me just put it in some directory that's within your path or add it to your path. For us Mac folks, once I unzip it, I have this one thing that looks like one app, it says an application. And so I simply drag it and drop it in the application directory. And because I already had it install, I'll just simply say replace. And that's all there is to it. Because I had it before, I already have a link for it here. But if you're on Mac and this is your first time, just open up Spotlight and search for it and run it, okay? Once you start it up, so let's click on this. Once you start it up, um, it's gonna take a while, load some things, and by default, it's going to, I think, come up with either a blank or this blink, but because I was using it before, um, it's loading this blink example. But let's say it does not have the blink example. Let's say it started up with a new file that looks something like this. Let's just say that's what it started with. Don't worry. Remember I said that for Arduino, you essentially program in, in C++. And what they give you are these two functions, a setup function, and it tells you this function run once, and a loop function, which run repeatedly. And so, let's say you have this blank screen. What you do is you go to File, and you say Examples, Basic, and there you go, Blink. And you open up that Blink example. And notice, if you want, you can get rid of all this other stuff. And the examples are read-only, so you can feel free to modify them because when you go to save them, it's gonna force you to save it on your own directory. Those are all comments if you don't know C or C++ programming, but those are comments. And notice we have the setup function, and it says, call this function called pin mode, which you don't need to install anything, it's just available for you. Pin mode and LED built in. LED built-in is there's an LED on this board and it's tied to one of the GPIO pins already. And so LED built-in is gonna be defined correctly for whichever board you select, which we will select. We haven't selected our board yet, but we will in a minute, I'll show you how to do it. So even if I connect my ESP8266, which I keep mentioning, um, to this LED built-in is going to be defined appropriately for that board once I select that board. So you need not worry about which exact pin it is. Of course, you can look up in the source to see, or the library to see which button that is. But for the Arduino, this is usually pin 13, I believe. Anyway, we said configure our pin mode, our, pin, our built in pin, LED pin for output, which is what we wanna do. We wanna be able to drive the value on that pin. So that means it must be configured for output. If you want to be able to read the value, let's say from a thermometer or something else, we would configure it for input. Um, we say a digital high, which is usually five volt, but it can be like 3.3 volt. Uh, five volts is high, low volts is zero. And if you think in binary, it's high is just one, low is zero. And so if we have an LED connected to that, that LED is gonna be on, then we turn it off, wait another second, and so this is in milliseconds, okay? So a thousand milliseconds is one second. 
So let's just simply upload this to our board and run it. But before we do, this is the upload command. There is a verify and of course you can do a new file. We can open files and we can save. We haven't made any modifications, so there's nothing to save. How do we ensure that we have the correct board? So you can see here, because I used this before, um, this is the board I selected for mine. But the port is wrong because it keeps changing that port number. I don't know why, but this is what you do. You go to tools and you go to boards first and you select the boards that you have. But since I'm using my Arduino um, and this is the one I have, I can see the name here, this um, Dumilnov or whatever you pronounce it. I selected that and then I go back and I say tool after I select my board processor. Again, if I look on the back, mine is the Atmega 328. So I have that selected. And then port. If I go to the port, you can see all the ports listed. And notice there's that weird port. Now, right now, it has something else. So I select the correct port. And there you can see it reflected at the bottom. Unfortunately, the Arduino IDE can't um, make this any bigger. So now that I have that selected, once you do that, just hit this button. It's going to say compile, compile and sketch. That's fine. I can say okay, and it's gonna compile, and then you'll see it's gonna say uploading. So done uploading. Actually, it's um, it uploaded. It happened really fast, and you can see that LED is blinking. Um, so we can know that's the LED because I'll change the code here, and instead of every one second, so one Mississippi on, one Mississippi off. I will make it blink a little bit faster by putting this at 500, which is half a second, and this as 500. And so we'll upload again. And you see it's uploaded. There you go. And then now it's, notice how it's blinking a little bit faster. All right. Um, let's make it blink even faster. And we don't have to keep it on and off the same time. I'll just change how long I keep it on to half a second and how long we keep it off to 200 millisecond so it should be on longer than it is off um, off and this is the key to something called pulse width modulation which we will talk about in a few videos from now where we talk about how to control that motor and how to drive it so as you can see um, now it's on and for longer than it's off okay and so that's the basic of connecting to your Arduino. If you want to do the online IDE, go to software, online tools. Let's see, click this page, okay. To use the online editor, simply follow um, these instructions, okay. Getting started with a code editor, Arduino, that, and set up for Arduino. This link, log into the editor, pick your platform. Yes, there we go. Arduino Web Editor plugin. I don't know why they make this so hard. Um, so once you get down to this, uh, here you go. You can find all the different plugins here. And so I'm using Chrome right now. So if I click that, um, it will download the Chrome plugin. And once I install the Chrome plugin, it will connect to my device on my computer and then when I go to the online editor which is here uh, da, 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 loading Arduino create yes this is the online editor and you can see it there and then you're going to be able to click on this drop down oh, come on click on this drop down and click select board and so you would select the board that you have and then you select the you know, processor, and then you'll have a port selection. But because I did not install the plugin for Chrome, I have it installed for Firefox. Uh, let's see, it's taking a while to run. So um, I'll let that do its thing. Okay, finish, and okay, I think it says detected a board. So if I go here, click here, and yep, there it is. It detected that board, so I select that, 
and uh, board type and the memory and then I say OK and essentially I can do the same programming from here so I can do pin mode that LED built in and then output and then I could come down here and I can say um, digital write uh, LED built in yeah, built in um, and then high and let's say delay let's do one second just to make sure that we have that running and digital right again hello and then delay for 500 milliseconds and so upload this to the board and run it so we should see this start blinking like crazy um so it's busy uploading sketch and it's compiling there you go it's uploading it and notice it start running so um that's another way you can use it from the the online editor all right that's it for setting up our arduino Basically, this should work for any Arduino-like board or any board that's supported by the Arduino editor if you follow the procedure. So hopefully you didn't have any problems. If you did, please let me know so at least I can try and see if I can find a solution for it and may maybe mention that so that other people can, um, you know, if they run into the same thing, can have a solution. We're going to look at installing Formata in the next video and how we can use Formatter with Go programming using a package called GoBot um, for robot programming essentially. And we'll see how combining the Go programming language with Formatter and using the GoBot package, we can control our boards the same way how we're writing some of the simple code. But if you are not familiar with Go, check out my Go programming course on Udemy. Um, if you can afford to pay for the code, buy it. Or if you can only pay a portion, use one of the coupons. If you cannot afford to get the course, pay for the course, any portion, if you just have $0, definitely send me an email so I can send you a free coupon. I make this course for a reason, and that is to help others. And I learn also along the way. So I do not want um, to make any video that people are not able to see. Um, there's also my Go on the Run YouTube series, where I just sort of post pretty much what I feel like about Go. There's also the Go course that's already been here on YouTube, but I would recommend that you take the Udemy course and said if you are new to Go and certainly spread the word. Please, please, please subscribe. Please let others know. Please like, thumbs up the video and leave comments to let me know how I can make things better. Um, or if you like what you're seeing or if you want to see something else, take care. Bye. Have a great day.